funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee. Nowadays in our modern Ireland, addiction is widespread, whether it be to drink, drugs, gambling or whatever. Most worryingly, various Irish governmental reports published in recent years show that there exists an increasing trend for binge or over-drinking among young people. Such over-drinking inevitably leads into other behaviours such as smoking, illegal drugs, unsafe sex and poor mental and physical health. Ewan McKinney, Head of Communications and Advocacy with Alcohol Action Ireland. We have about 1.4 million people in this country who are harmful drinkers. We know that over a thousand people die every year in relation to alcohol related illnesses. Over half of Ireland's suicides, sadly, are where you know alcohol is a contributing factor. Uh, we know that 60,000 children every year start drinking. We know culturally that we celebrate every episode of our lives from the cradle to the grave with alcohol. And we know that in general we have a significant difficulty in terms of strangling or certainly controlling that culture that is our love affair of alcohol in Ireland. There's not a family in Ireland that isn't affected by alcohol. We have a society where alcohol is absolutely awash through it. It completely and utterly saturates our everyday existence. We have a very unhealthy relationship with alcohol. As a country, we are suffering. And this is a massive problem in Ireland. Yet despite this difficulty... Nevertheless, many addiction counsellors, psychotherapists, groups and addiction treatment centres throughout Ireland are doing Trojan work to help educate the general public about the pearls of alcohol and drug abuse, as well as to help those who've fallen into addiction to find recovery and live a meaningful life. This five-part series aims to highlight the stories of such people and groups. I was a slave to alcohol, but now... I feel free. To be able to wake up every morning being free, being free of taking a drug, there's just nothing like it. It's freedom. You don't need alcohol to enjoy life. There's so much more to life. I enjoy now life, truly enjoy life. I don't need that crutch of addiction to keep me going because I'm strong enough now as a person to do it for myself. The whole recovery living is just so much better than being an addiction. And we begin our odyssey by first talking with Alice McLaughlin, psychotherapist and addiction counsellor. Here's what Alice had to say about her latest book, which seeks to raise awareness among young people about the dangers of drinking and doing drugs. My book is called Yes to Health, No to Drugs, and it's a book for 11 to 14 year olds, and it's to educate primary school children about the dangers of drugs and alcohol before they actually begin to drink or use any drugs. What inspired the book in the first place, Alice? For 20 years, I have been invited to speak to a sixth class in a girls' school in New Ross in County Wexford. And every year they keep inviting me back. And I I think this year, because it was 20 years, I began to think, I, I woke up basically and I said, wow, this must be needed and it must be useful and valuable because they keep asking me back. And then I decided, I said, if I write this book, then it can reach every 12 year old in every sixth class in Ireland, whereas I was just going to one school. So what are the core messages which Alice McLaughlin's book Say Yes to Health, No to Drugs conveys? The core messages are to educate them about alcohol and drugs. So to tell them what a drug is, how it affects people, to tell them that alcohol is a drug and it affects people, to encourage them never to take illegal drugs because they are dangerous and potentially lethal the very first time they use them, and also to encourage the young people 
to wait until at least age 18 to begin drinking because this will greatly lessen their chances of developing addiction and it will also give them time to develop physically, mentally and emotionally before they take on the adult responsibility of responsibly handling alcohol. And what are the factors which lead to excessive drinking among teenagers? Alice McLaughlin. There are a number of factors. Children want, they're curious, so they want to experience what it's like. There's a lot of peer pressure and sometimes they find it hard to stand up to peers. There's also the culture, the, sometimes the family culture where they can see a lot of heavy drinking or drug use. There is the desire just to feel grown up. And I take each point by point and in the book I acknowledge it and then I encourage them to make a different choice. So just how important is it for young people to be adequately informed about the pearls of drinking and drugs? I think it's vital because research in Ireland clearly shows that when you have 12 to 14 year olds, very few of them have ever taken a drink. But by the time you get to 15, quite a few, like something like 24%, have already drank alcohol occasionally. So I really think we need to get them to have positive attitudes before they begin drinking. And in the book, I try very much to balance the message of the dangers of alcohol and drugs with the positive messages of here are some alternatives. Do some sports, spend time with friends, try out new clothes, get out in the fresh air. Do you know, positive things that will be a substitute, if you like. And to find out more about the dangers of excessive drinking of alcohol, especially among teenagers, I next talk with Marion Rackard an addiction counsellor and psychotherapist who currently works with the HSE. With alcohol, the key message is to delay the age at which a young person first starts drinking to over the age of 18. And the reason for that is because the young person's brain is in development until the early 20s. And in relation to that, there are many reasons, specifically in relation to the brain, that would give concern. The first thing being that the brain is under construction and is affected differently by alcohol than the adult brain. The second thing is that the parts of the brain that are used for learning, remembering and problem solving are all impacted by alcohol use. So we know that there is a tendency to drink. uh, It's described often as binge drinking, which is drinking six or more drinks on, on an occasion And that is for adults, but for young people who have access maybe to cheap alcohol or who are consuming behind their parents' knowledge um, or their parents don't know. So that the teenage brain is much more susceptible to becoming addicted to alcohol. And that's what the danger is. And a, a life of addiction is a very painful life and it can happen so easily. Because teenagers who start drinking alcohol before the age of 15 are five times more likely to become dependent on alcohol. Therefore, the age at which young people start drinking should be delayed for as long as possible. And it's important to recognise that 20% of the Irish population does not consume alcohol. So young people today have a choice not to drink alcohol. And I suppose the, the main key messages from a health perspective is that There are benefits to not drinking. First of all, those benefits concern the fact that you can socialise with your own strengths, your own personality, your own spirit, without the use of an intoxicant or a psychoactive substance. A crutch, so to speak. Exactly. So that's the main thing that, you know, being proud of the fact that you can socialise, you can have fun and you can, you know, enjoy your life without the use of alcohol. Remembering as well that if you're consuming alcohol, your fitness level, your weight issues and other issues are often affected. So if you want to be at your best, because a lot of young people are into sport and into athletics and so on. So if you want to be at your very best form, it's best to avoid alcohol. However, we know that the drinks industry in Ireland spends 
somewhere over the region of 60 million euros per annum on alcohol advertising. And there are a significant number of young people who are being treated for alcohol and drug problems as well as who have to be detoxified from the use of it. Recent findings prove that the behaviour of parents is hugely significant in whether a teenager will decide to begin drinking alcohol. Marion Rackard elaborates, making reference to a recent study done by two secondary school students. A study done by two young scientists in 2015. The aim of their research was to investigate if there was a relationship between parental attitudes and alcohol consumption and teenage drinking. And the reason for this was that uh, the idea of the project came about when they were out on their junior cert results night and they noticed that many of their peers were starting to drink. And it's well known that peer pressure is one of the major causes for teenage drinking. However, they noticed that young people in the same circle of friends had very different drinking patterns. So they realised there must be another influence on teenage drinking and they decided to investigate if parents had an effect And they also did a test to discover the three most influential factors on teenage drinking. And these were that the dad or, you know, that if your dad was a a heavy drinker who was drinking over the weekly low risk guidelines, that that was a risk. That if the father allowed their teenager to drink on special occasions or that the mother allowed their teenager to drink on special occasions, that this was actually giving permission for the young person to consume and to think it's it's fine. So the key message is for parents, parents need to give teens a clear, unambiguous message that they disapprove of underage drinking. So that's a very important message, health message. Believe it or not, a recent study in Ireland done by the ISPCC revealed that 1 in 11 children's lives are negatively affected by a parent's drinking. To discover more, I recently visited Man School Gorman, a secondary school situated in Enniscorthy, County Wexford, to meet several students there. Here's what they had to say about their recent Young Social Innovators project which sought to raise funds for Alcohol Action Ireland, as well as to raise awareness in their community about how many children's lives are negatively affected by a parent's drinking. My name is Sean Griffin and our project is to raise awareness to the fact that 1 in 11 children's lives are being negatively affected by a parent's drinking. In order to do this, we tried to create a lot of different campaigns to support this raise awareness uh, one of which was the dizzy dip challenge which was ice bucket challenge uh, we then uh, put a billboard up in Enniscorthy so that uh, many people could see that one in eleven children's lives are being negatively affected by parents drinking so why did Fiona and his fellow students choose the topic of alcoholism to do a project on Cameron Butler so we were looking for a project for a young social innovators class and we were kind of going through and we were at the age 16 where everybody kind of started drinking and we were saying, oh, is that a problem? And we didn't think it was really a problem among us, but we were saying, we looked deeper into it and we found kind of the fact that one in 11 children's lives are negatively affected. So we kind of worked on that and we just advanced on that, basically. And were you surprised by that fact? I mean, one in 11 is up very, very high proportion of young people to be affected by this issue. Yeah, we were really surprised because when we did the math, it was, it was three people out of our class, yeah. So we were very surprised and we were kind of like, oh, who is it in our class? But like... Yeah, but um, it was really surprising because when you put it into context in a class or in a school, there's so many students that you just, you'd never think that there's something going on there, like, you know, so... Absolutely, and so it's an, an issue which is really, really yeah. affecting society, having a bit, and obviously it's a negative effect. And yeah, any comments, any input yourself? Well, I was just thinking in the idea of why we actually went for that was sort of going off what Cameron said in the way it was something we could all relate to, as in alcohol is such a big thing and grand in Irish culture. And it was really nice to look at that from a different viewpoint and the actual effects that could have on the children going through that. The big thing about 1 in 11 children's lives are negatively affected so that shows that even more so our 
affected generally, but the negative was a big thing for us because as Cameron said it himself, mm. when you take into accord our class and even just in a score to your Wexford, there's actually a lot of people suffering. Joel Harris. Here's what Abby Kennedy had to say about one of the big lessons which she learned from doing the project. You kind of look at people in a new light, I suppose. Um, you have to be more sensitive to what people go through at home, especially since if there was three in our year and we couldn't figure out who they were, they were obviously hiding it. So be more sensitive to people. And as was already touched on, a core component of their alcohol awareness project was creating a billboard poster, which was displayed in Enniscorty town. Abby describes that billboard poster. Well, the statistic is displayed on the right side and the central image is, um, it's actually my cousin. We took a picture of him while he was kind of hunched up and sad looking. And then we um, <laughs> we drew a picture on the, the wall in the background of his parents drinking just to show that it, do, it does affect him. Um, and we also have the Alcohol Action Ireland and the YSI logo in the corner so people know where to go and stuff. Um, but it was just kind of to spread the statistic to other people because we were shocked so we reckon we needed to make more people know about And Abby, was there anyone that came up kind of and gave you commentary or feedback on the actual billboard? This was up in Enniscorty for what duration and any feedback? Um, I think it was eight or nine weeks, was it? Yeah, Um, I mean it was in all the local papers because we tried to make a big deal of it, you know, because we won the money to put it up so we needed to really uh, raise awareness. But um, I worked in a local cafe at the time and people in there were talking about it. Yeah, it was kind of, I was saying it to them, you know, that's my billboard but, or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, kind of make people look at it because sometimes where it was, people mightn't be looking, but they are at the same time. So to really make them pay attention. That's great. That's great. So a lot of good work going on and it's all grassroots. That's the important thing. You're in the cafe, you're getting the message out there. And uh, by the way, I did it, you know. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> what was the core message you're trying to get across in this depiction of your cousin who's hunched over and a very powerful image? Just that the, maybe it's always, uh, it's not always visible, but that the alcohol does ne- negatively affect the children at the end of the day. Um, and that, you know, he's kind of hiding away and even though he's drawn the picture and the, the damage is kind of there. So I just want to clarify my cousin doesn't actually, he's just a model. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main thing in that message was to notice that it doesn't say that they're physically abused and that they're just simply negatively affected maybe as well as abuse. Man school Gorman student Hazel Duggan. So it can be anything from just not feeling what they should feel at home as in safe and they should feel loved and being neglected. That, that, yeah, they're, they're being neglected. Being neglected. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry. Uh, it's just it's like Abby said just having the sensitivity and like realizing that you don't know what everyone goes through and these kids have no voice to speak up for themselves. So we tried to show that to people. And here's what Abby had to say about another lesson which she took away from the project. By the way, YSI stands for Young Social Innovators. We actually went to a YSI interview myself, Fionn and Joe, and we did an interview and we managed to win €1,500, which is what paid for the billboard. And so I think the lesson learned was that it's very difficult to organise something like that. But it was, yeah, it was the most in the country. Um, we earned the highest, but I mean, it paid off in the end, I suppose. But it was Congratulations, very wow, that's yeah. a great achievement. Yeah, we were, we were happy, but it was, I mean, it was tough to get there even just, we had to write speeches and we had to organise it and to make sure Fionn didn't cry. And <laughs> <laughs> Fionn, what have you got to say? Um, well, what happened when we when we got there, we were given the speeches and just I, we tried to show that we were emotionally connected to these issues. That uh, we really wanted to show them that this is a massive problem in Ireland, and we needed to do that. So I just got a little bit emotional when we were speaking. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, uh, but it, it paid off because we managed to get the money, and we we managed to have the billboard up there luckily, and so hopefully it people saw it and either just they took into consideration when they're dealing with children that there is a chance one in eleven or also if it's a parent that they look at their own drinking and think to themselves am I negatively affecting my child 
as was touched on already. In addition to the billboard, the students also did some fundraising. Cameron Butler. We created a challenge to try and raise money for Alcohol Action Ireland. Uh, we called it the Dizzy Dip Challenge. And um, basically you could text in hidden to, uh, 50300 and um, you could donate two euro. And basically all proceeds would go to Alcohol Action Ireland. And that would kind of help Alcohol Action Ireland work towards finding a solution because we were kind of trying to raise awareness for it. Whereas if a parent seen the billboard or saw this fact and kind of looked at themselves or they kind of knew someone else and they could kind of have an impact there, that our raising awareness would have an impact and kind of come up with solutions. And staying with the topic of alcohol awareness, Hazel Duggan had this pertinent comment to make. We don't talk much about the effects of drinking on other people and not just yourself. Um, you see the ads now, which are brilliant, of course, saying to find your way home and to make sure you have a lift home and things like that. But I suppose they don't really talk about what happens at home. So I th- suppose bringing the awareness to that and the fact that, that as well, that it's not just bruises or anything that show that alcohol is ne- negatively affecting somebody. And Joe Harris had this to say about what he most enjoyed about the project. For me, I think it was since I'm from Enniscorthy, going through town and actually seeing something we made. And I remember being in class trying to figure out how to design this from the get-go since like, we didn't really have experience with something like that. So it was a really big thing for us, or me especially, just walking through town and seeing an effect of something we done. Yeah, I, I agree with Joe. Was just walking through town and seeing people looking up and kind of pointing at the billboard and going, wow. Like, and you kind of see the look on their faces going, is that is that fact true? Like, And just being surprised by it, but actually seeing that you're having an impact on people and people are taking in, kind of. And you kind of think you're helping people as well, which is it's a nice feeling because... You're in school, like it's not something you do on a regular basis, is go out and help and uh, work with charities, but it's, it's good, it's a nice experience. Any advice to anyone tuned in about making responsible life choices and just the lessons maybe learned from this? Any advice, yeah? I think it's hard for us in a certain place to be giving advice to adults because we're only like between 18 and 17, 19. Like, what about uh, your peers? Peers, uh, when it comes to drinking, I think it's easy to get sucked into the sort of life of binge drinking and doing it every weekend and sort of losing yourself to it. But you do have to remember, as fun as the the actual high of the drink and the party and is, there'll always be the come down. And that's what people our age are really trying to avoid and what we should be taking notice of and facing. And Joe, yourself, because of your involvement in this project and these lessons that you've learned yourself, I mean, would you kind of be very conscious now and maybe be more reluctant to take drink? To be fully honest, I am still young, but with this project, it really has opened up what will happen in the future if I don't leave this sort of period of my life behind and I do have to grow out of it at some stage for children and younger family members because when you come to, when you come to think of it if you're in a family where there is younger kids you are immediately your role model you're someone that they will look up to and you do have a responsibility with that to try and be the best person you can be for them joe harris and fionn griffin and abby kennedy had this advice to give to teenagers it's mostly just to be more conscientious about, uh, first of all, about how much you drink, but also who you're drinking around. If you're drinking around children, that's not good for them to see. And it, it often makes children uncomfortable seeing people drunk and w- around that. But also, if someone says they don't want to drink or, or whatever, people often push drink on them. But for all we know, it could be because they could be negatively affected by alcohol and they just don't want to try that because they don't want to become addicted themselves so by forcing that on them it's really it's not good for us to be forcing it on people. A lot of people think they can use being drunk to make mistakes and stuff and there's always a lot of fallout after that and just to be more conscious of that and that it's not always an excuse to do stupid things especially if it affects children negatively. Is perhaps the best website which parents and their children can access in order to better inform themselves on how they can develop lifelong healthy attitudes towards alcohol is askaboutalcohol.ie. Marion Rackard of the HSE. There is a new website called Ask About Alcohol and it's 
a really good outline of information, particularly for parents. So if parents can go to that, ask about alcohol forward slash parents, they will see that there are really good resources there and tips to help young people, uh, to help in the conversations with young people about drinking and, and drug, drug taking. What kind of tips? Just one or two for the listeners out there, Marion, for the boot, please. Rather than sitting down for the big chat about this is time to talk about alcohol, it's like the opportunities that can arise when you're watching a film where there is a person who is drunk or at Christmas time when you see everybody maybe buying alcohol and so on. So those opportunities just open up a conversation with a young person. In other words, it's informal. It's exactly. kind of it's it's not the big deal, so to speak. It's done discreetly, and but the message is, is is communicated. That's right, exactly. And also, I suppose the example of the parents' behaviour. Very often, if parents are not considering their own behaviour and how they're drinking, and you know the issue of the consequences of their drinking such as hangovers, such as maybe just being in bad form, being irritable. That can often influence young people. And also, it has to be said that where parents are dependent on alcohol, children often can't express fully how they're feeling. And they see this parental pattern as the norm. And oftentimes, they they use alcohol themselves to deal with their underlying distress and, and feelings about their parents drinking. So in other words, the black hole within and trying to fill that gap within or whatever that the psychologists talk about, but it's only a short term solution and it leads to bigger problems down a lot bigger problems That's down the right. line. Exactly. Yeah. An, an awful lot. So we have to think of this whole pattern of as a continuum. And what I often say is if you drink too much, too often, for too long problems are likely to arise. Alcohol is a drug. Take it off enough, there is always a likelihood that you may become addicted to it. The harm that alcohol can cause. Alcohol is a depressant and it can leave people feeling quite down. It is an addictive substance. A life of addiction is a very painful life and it can happen so easily. Funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.